as we venture into this topic, the word in and of itself of dunya represents its worth in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The word dunya, which means dunu or dani, which means that which is the lowest and that which is humiliated, is actually a great indication of where it stands in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and where it should stand in our sight. Now as for the value of dunya, and Imam Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala in his elucidations in Miftah al-Dar al-Sa'ada where he speaks about the reality of this world, he says something very interesting. He says that the dunya knows its worth. The world knows its worth. And because the world knows its worth and knows that at some point it will be completely abandoned by each and every single person, it decorates itself and adorns itself hoping that it can delude a person as long as possible. So he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of this dunya already knows its worth. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, that if this world was to mean to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if it was to be in value to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, more than the wing of a mosquito, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not allow the one who rejects him to even have a sip of water. You think about that. These people that insult Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, these people that insult the deen, these people that live completely immoral lives, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala still allows them to be sustained from this dunya. And that shows you the worth of it in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet ﷺ made a direct equivalence, he drew a direct equivalence between the way Allah sees it and the way Allah allows it to benefit others and sustain others. If it's not worth anything to you, then you're not going to fight over it. You're not going to be possessive over it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He allows those people who reject Him, despite their rejection, to drink from it and to benefit from it. And in another hadith, which is very interesting, the Prophet ﷺ said that on the Day of Judgment, يَأْتِ الرَّجُلْ السَّمِينَ الْعَظِيمَ فَلَا يَزِنُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ جَنَاحَ بَعُوضًا in the same language, the Prophet said that on the day of judgment, a person would come that is huge and mighty in the sense of his tyranny and his arrogance and his pride. So physically could be huge and also have a really big head in the metaphorical sense and could see himself far greater than he actually is. And Allah puts him in the mizan. Allah puts him in the scale. Because on the Day of Judgment, not only are our deeds weighed, we ourselves are weighed. But we are weighed for our Iman and our character. And this man who is very proud of himself, who was a man of pride, who commanded a certain presence or authority in this world or amount of wealth, is put in that scale and he does not weigh in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Janaha ba'udah, the wing of a mosquito. And so, the dunya has no value to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nor does a person who's immersed themselves in this dunya have any value to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nor do the vessels that carry our souls have any value to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna Allah la yanduru ila suwarikum wa la ila asadikum. Allah does not look at your bodies or your appearances, but Allah looks at your hearts. And so what gives us value as people is that which is not of this world, that which has that which existed before this world and that which will exist after this world. So the dunya and the people of dunya and the vessels of dunya are all worthless in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What makes it worth anything are the people that are beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that reside in a certain place. And so the first thing that we establish is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already has determined the value of this dunya to not be worth more than the weight of a mosquito. And Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala says, as for the believers, because of their knowledge of Allah and what Allah has informed them of the nature of this dunya, they also are not deluded by it. They also see no value in it. And so they decide to abandon this world in the spiritual sense before the world abandons them. That's a powerful message. They decide to abandon the world spiritually before the world abandons them physically. Before the dunya has fooled you until the end of your life and deluded you, spiritually you're able to shut off those shackles, to break those shackles. And 
here's the third thing, and this is this is the most powerful elucidation in the sequence. He says, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, there is not a single person except that at one point in their existence, they will completely shed the worth of this dunya, even the most wicked of disbelievers. Because on the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَوَدُّ الْمُجْرِمُ لَوْ يَفْتَدِي مِنْ عَذَابِ يَوْمِ إِذِينَ بِبَنِي وَصَاحِبَتِهِ وَأَخِي وَفَصِيلَتِهِ الَّتِي تُؤْوِي That on the day of judgment, a, a person would be willing to present this world in gold to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to get themselves out of the situation that they're in in the hereafter. They have no love for this world whatsoever. They would be willing to abandon everything of this dunya to better themselves in the hereafter. And he said, that's why it was called dunya. That's why it was called the most humiliated because there's not a single creature except that that creature will abandon it at some point in their existence. The game is to figure it out before it's too late.